Welcome to Carrick and Nathan's Culinary Creations. Today, we will be baking a cake and a chicken, but not at the same time. All right, let's begin. So, cooking, basically, is like riding a bike. Once you do it, you're just good at it. You know, you just understand cooking. So, that's why we're kind of winging it on these recipes. So, when we cook, since cooking comes naturally to us, we don't need a recipe. We do it our own way. All right, so let's get started. Um, first off, for the cake, you're gonna need about a cup of flour. So, I'm gonna get the flour. It's <laughs> probably about a cup. After you've added the flour, um, the next ingredient is eggs. Eggs, right. Right, uh, how many? Uh, it says two to seven. All right, two to seven. Eggs in the coat. Geronimo. Oh. <laughs> it's just kind of messy. Of course, the oil. Yep, you gotta add some oil. Yeah, the oil. All right, sweet. It says three tablespoons. Three tablespoons. Three tablespoons and a quarter of a cup. Yes. That works. That works. Sweet. It is salt. It says two tablespoons of salt. Alright. Alright, well, you just got the salt. measuring cup. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get uh, the third cup. It calls for a quarter. We'll just do Okay, that. do this. Alright. Are you sure this is the right salt? Yeah, rock salt. Rock salt. I wonder if that's going to be chunky in the. No, it'll all blend, blend in. We need to mix with the oil. Uh, no. Oh, we take it to the, to the blender thing. The, blend, the blendy thing. Yep. Alright, we're going to run our recipe here through this KitchenAid Master Blaster here. So, we're going to need to get this into here. So, I guess right. we'll just, so we'll just start off. scoop oh. that <laughs> egg in there. Oh. There we go. It looks delicious. I honestly, I can't wait. Uh, so yeah, luckily we have uh, KitchenAid has provided us with this um, fantastic blender. I mean, as you can see, it's got a nice steady base here. Lock your bowl in. You've got 10 different settings on the side and an assortment of hooks. So first thing you gotta do is lock your bowl in place because this can get pretty messy and physical. Now, they give you three different hook styles. So you get to choose from your old style whisk. You know, it's what your grandmother used. Fantastic, great old router. Feeling like a pirate. Go with the hook. I mean, I love it's a the hook. it's a good one, especially for kids. You know, they like to pretend with it. And then, can't go wrong with the hook. Then my personal favorite is this little like Christmas tree looking thing. It's just good all around. It blends the qualities of the hook with the qualities of the whisk. First thing you want to do is just kind of start getting it mixed up, you know. And you really want to hear you really want to hear that crunch when you start this. I mean, that's how you know the KitchenAid is doing its doing its magic. So you just want to kind of mix it up. Just like this. I mean, don't leave any dry spots on the sides. Just get it all the way around. Now, of course, we gotta grease the pan. Now, you can use olive oil or vegetable oil, but I like to use industrial oil. We're just gonna spray it in here so it doesn't stick. Oh, it does not have the best smells, but it does do the job. So, we got our cake batter here, as you can see. And we're just gonna get some of this stuff into the cake pan. So now, all that's left is to pop this baby in the oven. So um, the recipe calls for 60 minutes at 350 degrees. But well, we did the math and we figured out that at 550 degrees, it should be done, well, right about now. And the next thing we're going to prepare for Carrick and Nathan's culinary creations is going to be our protein. As you can probably hear, it's 
frozen solid, so we're going to have to defrost it. Unfortunately, this is a pretty lengthy process. It takes a while. It's not a whole lot of fun, but let's see here. <sighs> Oh, can't stand that weight. But, now it's ready to prepare. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do, immediately after defrosting is, you want to tenderize it and get it ready for the table. So, lucky for us, Fifth Season has provided us with um, some of their patented meat tenderizer. So, first thing we're going to do, is we're going to just apply just a little bit to the top. <laughs> just like that. It looks, looks tender. <laughs> That's the way. Well, there you go. I guess we just wait for it to get more tender. Yep. <laughs> All right, now, while Nathan is tenderizing the meat, I have decided to prepare our side item, which will be sauteed onions. So, we got the pan, got some butter. <laughs> It's as prepared as it really gets, so we're just going to throw that on there. You want to take a look at this. Um, of course, onions, strong as they are, I would recommend a good set of goggles so your eyes, you know, don't water. So we're just going to saute this onion for about 20 minutes. So there's no doubt that the fifth season uh, meat tenderizer is definitely doing its work, but it looks like on this project it may need some additional help. So I'm going to use some foot masseuse techniques that I was taught by my grandfather. Okay, so I'm just going to start kind of tenderizing it just like this, you know, maybe flip it over. Now once you get it padded out, a lot like I have it now, you're going to want to go into a little more of a rapid technique, you know, so that way you can cover more surface area. So I'm going to kind of get it about like this. All right, so now it's time for the final stage of the meat tenderizing process, and that comes with the meat hammer. And the last step is to put it in the oven to bake. So we're just gonna scrape it off after it's been tenderized. It's ready to go. Cooking does have its hazards. <laughs> and that will have to do. <laughs> now we're going to take a look at the finished product. Oh my. Oh my goodness. That turned out pretty well. That looks absolutely tender. And of course, we got our side dish.